Welcome to part 2a of chapter 9. Actually, this is part 3, but since we had part 1a and 1b, and now we're in part 2a, and we'll have part 2b talking a lot about fermentation, I left it this way because that's how we sort of sequence the lectures in live class. In any case, we're going to be dealing with a little more of the citric acid cycle, a little bit of review on that, and then we're going to get into oxidative phosphorylation. Do not be intimidated by these figures. They're just showing you the protein subunits that go into the larger protein. So we have some subunits, and they work together to, to handle off electrons through this what's called electron transport. Then we pump protons. We're pumping protons into a gradient. Then we use that gradient to make ATP over here on the right. Looks complicated, but we're going to try to break it out. Part 2b is going to be about fermentation, so we'll, we'll save that for later. We are going to talk about it a little bit here, but uh, we'll save it for later mostly. We've dealt with the step 1 and the step 2 in the previous lectures. Now we are clearly in part 3, the oxidative phosphorylation part of this, and that involves electron transport and another process called chemiosmosis, not to be confused with regular water osmosis. This is chemiosmosis. This is the movement of protons specifically. Yeah, we're going to make water, but we're going we're to move protons first. This slide is just a quick reminder to not leave things behind. You need to know the steps about glycolysis, what's produced. We invest a little ATP, we get a little ATP. We, we harvest a few electrons, they go to NADH, and they're going to pop right into our process here. We oxidize pyruvate, which is one of the three carbons. Two of those are made by from a six-carbon glucose. We lose a little CO2 here. We enter the citric acid cycle as acetyl-CoA, and we have oxaloacetate, and we make citric acid. We're also going to make carbon dioxide here. We're going to make some NADH and FADH2. We're going to release one molecule of ATP, but mostly what we're making are these reduced NAD and FAD uh, carriers. So we're put, adding electrons to them. They move over to ox oxidative phosphorylation side of this, and now we're going to hit that part. Oh. And I forgot, substrate level phosphorylation. Can you explain it? Can you give an example or two? Although we've talked about this before, it's always good to make sure that, you, that we go over this repetitively. That is to say, this three carbon pyruvate, we're going to remove that carboxyl group. That's what you see coming off here as CO2. We remove this using a transport protein. We're going to link CoA, onto the acetyl group that's remaining. In the process of doing that, we're going to harvest a few electrons, making NADH, which move on to electron transport. So we're going to make a little CO2 here. Then we make some CO2 in the citric acid cycle. Getting some electrons here, and we are adding that CoA. That CoA facilitates the transfer of, a, of the acetyl group onto oxaloacetate. This picture right here, you can see pyruvate right here. This is what we make from glucose, and we can take pyruvate and move it into the citric acid cycle via converting it to acetyl-CoA and releasing carbon dioxide. Pyruvate, though, is the branch point. Pyruvate is the branch point. If we are aerobic, we can go down this way, but if we are anaerobic, we can shunt that pyruvate over into fermentation. So if we have a reduced concentration, that's what that bracket means, reduced concentration of oxygen, or we have increased metabolic need and probably a little bit of both, we will shunt pyruvate over into the fermentation pathway in order to make ATP more quickly. Less efficiently, but more quickly, and sometimes the need for speed outweighs efficiency. So if we have enough oxygen, we'll go down this way. We'll take pyruvate and put it into the, the mitochondria, make acetyl-CoA, and then feed the citric acid cycle. But no oxygen, we go to fermentation. So here we show yet again the three-carbon pyruvate being transported across both membranes, the inner and the outer. So we have the outer here and the inner. I should probably show those as four lines. But in any case, we're going to harvest some electrons to, to reduce NAD into NADH. We're going to release that uh, carboxyl group. 
We're going to add CoA, and then that will facilitate entry into the citric acid cycle, where we convert oxaloacetate into citric acid by adding carbons to it. So what are we making and what are we releasing? We are certainly making, as we cycle through here, reduced electron carriers. The FAD and the N FADH and the NAD are oxidized at first and then they're reduced at the end. We make a molecule of ATP and we're releasing a couple of carbon dioxides, one from here and one from here. You remember um, the drill, if you've ever trained in sports, where you run in a line, like you're running around the gym, and the, back, the person at the back of the line has to sprint to the front? That's kind of how we remove these carbons off of, of citric acid as we cycle through the citric acid cycle. We are cleaving off these carbons sequentially, and what happens is when we're done, we're back to oxaloacetate, and we can accept another acetyl-CoA. So that's, it's sort of along those lines, and you might see that in the, um, in the video that uh, I've provided. Now we're into oxidative phosphorylation and chemiosmosis. So what we are doing is we are coupling two processes. We're handing off electrons in order to create a proton gradient, and then we use the proton gradient to turn basically a turbine into a molecular turbine that forces phosphate onto ADP. So we're making this NADH, we're, we're using electrons to reduce NADH and to, and to create FADH2, and then that go, inserts into the electron transport chain. When we donate those electrons, it pumps protons, and the proton motive force is what we call it. It's the desire for protons to move out of the space in between the two mitochondrial membranes is what is, is, the, is the energy that we use to, to create a chemical bond on, uh, with a phosphate and an ADP. So the, pro the proteins that are found, and there are a number of proteins, and they have multiple subunits. It's very, very cool if you ever get to know it. It's just kind of intimidating at first. These proteins are found all along this fold of this inner mitochondrial membrane, not just three like this. I'm just showing you, showing you three right here, but they're actually arrayed all inside these folds, what we call Christi of the inner mitochondrial membrane. And they actually span the membrane in some cases. So there they are right there. And here's sort of a picture of them in the, in the mitochondrial membrane there. So there's the inner mitochondrial membrane. Here's the outer one. And what's happening is as those electrons are shuttled from one to another in those redox reactions we talked about, we are actually pushing protons into this space. It's actually like a form of active transport. There are tons and tons of protons in here, so it's a very, very low pH if you were to measure it. But lots and lots of protons, and we're pushing these ones against their concentration gradient. Then what we do is we use that concentration gradient to turn this turbine, this ATP synthase that makes ATP. As we shuttle those electrons across, what happens is at the end of this transport chain, we hand it off to oxygen, and oxygen will then take those electrons and we'll grab some protons and we'll form water. So we are literally synthesizing water in the final step of electron transport. So oxygen is what we call the final electron acceptor the final electron acceptor, because we're not handing off the electrons uh, anymore once we make water. And so, like I said, it's in the inner mitochondrial membrane. I already mentioned that. Most of the components are proteins, and they're multi-protein complexes. And it's alternating being reduced. So, like, for instance, when NADH comes in, when NADH comes in, it's reduced at this point. It's going to hand off those electrons. And so this guy is reduced, and NAD is oxidized. And that should have a little plus there, by the way. It should be NAD plus. So we're handing off two electrons. Those electrons move along, and as they move across here, we're alternating reducing these complexes in sequence. And we pump protons into that intermitochondrial space between the inner 
and the outer mitochondrial membrane. Right here at complex four, we hand off those electrons to oxygen and we make water. Okay, we're making water, we're, we're, we're reducing oxygen into water. Complex five over here is not involved with electron transport. Complex five is known as ATP synthase. It is an enzyme complex that synthesizes ATP from ADP and what we call PI, or also known as inorganic phosphate, because there's no carbon in it. It's just phosphorus and oxygen. And a lot of study has gone into this. Why? Because it is so unbelievably important for life. And, and there are very, very slight, subtle differences in certain life forms, particularly bacteria and uh, prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. And so we study this in order to maybe find a better antibiotic or those types of things. There are kids in this world who have three genetic parents, not two. The reason they have three genetic parents is that they use donor mitochondria, and the mitochondria actually encode a lot of these, these complexes uh, for electron transport. But these are just a series of oxidation reduction actions, and what we're doing is we're using energy to pump protons. It's just that simple. So here's the NADH coming in here. It hands off the electrons. They get handed down, 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 down through a series of cytochrome proteins. That's what these CYTs stand for. There's cytochrome. You might hear about that from once. Uh, you might have heard of CoQ. If you go to one of those nutrition centers, you might see that. CoQ is, is right here. So NAD enters here. FAD enters here. I'm not too worried about that. What we are doing is pumping protons. We are pumping protons. And at the end, we hand off those electrons to oxygen and we make water. That's, that's all there is, a complicated picture to illustrate a simple point of handing off electrons to pump protons and then make molecular water. So there we go. As we move those electrons, the protons get pumped. It's a form of active transport is what it is. But once we're done, we will then have protons to make ATP. So we'll make a little water in the process, but those protons are going to drive our ATP synthase. Not a whole lot else to say here. We've said this before, but I want to keep reiterating because I know that sometimes you miss stuff. We hand off electrons in complex one with NADH, and we hand off electrons in complex two with FADH2. There are not more electrons in FADH2. It's just a slightly different uh, molecule. It's a flavin adenine dinucleotide, and this is a nicotinic adenine dinucleotide. In any case, these, these complexes are called cytochromes. You might hear about those from time to time. We aren't generating ATP with electron transport, not directly, it's indirectly. We're pumping protons when we're doing this through complex one through four, pumping protons. And what it does is it allows us to gently hand off electrons so that we keep the amount of energy that's in those uh, electrons manageable. We don't get too hot, don't have too much free energy to cause inappropriate reactions. Now let's finish the final step. So we've created a proton gradient ele using electron transport. We've created a proton gradient in between the inner and outer mitochondrial membranes. And so there's this proton gradient that we've created. This is electron transport here, pumped the protons, got a lot of protons. And what happens is they move down through a channel in ATP synthase and they cause this ATP synthase to spin. I have some videos of this for you, um, but we're causing that ATP synthase to spin and we are literally physically forcing phosphates onto ADP, one for every ADP. Force it on there, we make ATP and now we have an, a molecule that we can use for other processes in the cell. So there is ATP synthase. The spinning of ATP synthase forces that inorganic phosphate onto that ADP. It's very, very cool. So as protons move down their concentration gradient, this thing spins and creates ATP.
force of the concentration gradient of hydrogen, of protons, is called a proton motive force. The protons are causing motion of ATP synthase. And when ATP synthase is allowing those protons across the inter intermitochondrial membrane, it drives phosphorylation of ADP into ATP. This is chemiosmosis. We're using H plus gradient to, to do work to create a chemical bond. It's an interface of physical and chemical processes. So here's electron transport. Well, here are the complexes, the cytochromes. Here's oxygen, our final electron acceptor, making water. And we're pumping protons as we hand off those electrons from complex 1 to 2 to 3, 4. Okay. FADH enters in after 1, and it, it pumps 2 rather than 3, but no big deal. Not too worried about that. But this guy spins. This guy spins just like a turbine. And here's how this works. We have lots of protons up here. And as protons enter this little slot here, they slide into a binding site. And this causes this whole complex, this whole light purple complex, to spin to our relative to our left. This drives a shaft, which also drives this part. This spins as well. You've got a, you've got a stable piece here as well. They call it a stator. I'm not worried about those those terms, but as this thing spins, it literally physically forces that phosphate right onto ADP. So here's a set of animations in increasing complexity for you. Here's ATP synthase. Protons are moving down their gradient, and in that process, we create a high energy bond between ADP and inorganic phosphate. Let's watch it one more time. This thing is spinning, by the way. It spins as those protons move through, and that energy from the spinning forces on that phosphate. Now let's look at a slightly more accurate, slightly little more complex picture. As the protons enter, they cause this thing to spin, and it's that spinning motion that we use to create that phosphodiester bond to make ATP. So as the protons enter, they do a lap around that spinning rotor, when they're done with the lap, they're kicked out into the inner mitochondrial space. Catalytic head, as it moves, is activated, and that will then force that phosphate onto ADP, which is shown right here. It's not showing it very well, but it's creating ATP. And then our final image is the is an actual more a more an accurate crystallography image of this of the of the ATP synthase. Here's the rotor and the rod here. Here's the stator, the stator. You can see that the catalytic heads don't move that much. The rod's moving inside the catalytic heads. And when it's doing that, you can kind of see ADP and PI being turned into ATP, but it's kind of hard to see. But that's what's going on in the membrane. It's one of the really, really cool processes in biology. The interface between chemistry and physics and biology. You see a picture like this, you don't have to be intimidated anymore. Follow the electrons. Here are the electrons start. We hand it off from NADH, and as we hand it off, we're pumping protons against their concentration gradient. Here's FADH coming in here, and it's moving two rather than three, but no big deal. And then those protons are uh, in a gradient that then moves through our turbine to make ATP chemiosmosis. Electron transport over here, chemiosmosis over here. Exergonic reaction, endergonic reaction. Here's the picture from your book. Again, the key is don't get frustrated. Look for those electrons, follow them through. We're making water at the end. That's our final electron acceptor. Proton gradients turn in our ATP synthase. All right, same pictures as before, just uh, showing it a different way. We're pumping those protons and electron transport, and then the protons serve to drive our ATP synthase. So those redox reactions in electron transport, those small drops in energy are pumping those protons. Proton motive force.
couple of slides might be a little bit confusing. It's just showing you the whole deal put together. We're going to start from the beginning. So most of the energy is flowing this way. We take glucose. We're handing it off to electron carriers, NADH and FADH2. The electron transport chain generates a proton motive force and makes ATP. Yeah, we're going to lose a little energy here and there, but this is the primary route of energy in oxidative situations. It's only about 34% efficient. So we make 32 ATP with only about a third of the total energy. The rest of the energy is released as heat and, um, and in, in bonds in, in the, in the uh, product molecules. So only about 34% of the total energy in a glucose molecule can make that much ATP. Even so, it's much more efficient than fermentation and anaerobic respiration. For whatever reason, there's always a little slippage. Sometimes, that's why we say about 32 ATP. It's not exactly. Sometimes it makes a little less. Sometimes it makes a little more. The reason is, is that we're handing electrons, and electrons are reactive. They slip a little bit. Just like your car isn't perfect with its engine. Every once in a while, maybe not all the gas gets burned up, and maybe it gets burned up down in the tailpipe or something. Sometimes you hear that in really bad cars. In bad cars, there's a lot of slippage, and you might hear a backfire from that car. That's because a lot of gas made it into the tailpipe and then ignited into a large explosion. But there are lots of reasons why the proteins slip a little bit. These are reactive molecules, etc. But it's all here. It's just that you have to take it one bite at a time and, and get this down. Then, use, then learn this part, get that down. Figure out where these things are going and get that down. What's the first step here? Get that down. What are the products? Take this sequentially. If you try to take this from the 10,000 foot level, you'll never get it and you'll leave points on the table. So thank you for your time. This is uh, wrapping up the, this part of the chapter. We have one more installment for, um, for um, fermentation and we will have completed chapter nine. So I'll see you in the final installment and uh, thanks again and I'll talk to you soon.